Today's videos are going to give you a brief introduction to parallel manipulators. Before today, we have only looked at serial manipulators. Before I go into giving you a definition of what a serial manipulator is versus what a parallel manipulator is, I'm going to show you a couple of videos to show you the difference between these two kinds of manipulators. Here's a video of a serial manipulator performing a pick and place operation. You might recognize that this type of manipulator is a scara manipulator, and it's one type of a serial manipulator. It's called a serial manipulator because each joint that is actuated is attached to the end of the joint before it. For example, there's a joint right here that is actuated, and that joint is attached to a link, and then a second actuated joint is attached to the end of that one. There's then another link, and a third actuated joint is attached at the end. Now, here's a pick and place operation being performed by a parallel manipulator. In a parallel manipulator, the actuated joints are not all attached to the ends of other actuated joints. Instead, the actuated joints are placed in parallel. That is, each actuated joint is connected both to the end effector and to the ground. In this manipulator that you're seeing here, there is an actuated joint here, one here, and a third one on this other leg of the robot. In a serial manipulator, each of our actuated joints is attached to the previous actuated joint, or if it is the first actuated joint, it's attached to ground. Similarly, each actuated joint is also attached to the next actuated joint, or it's attached to the end effector if it's the last actuated joint. The parallel manipulator is different than this. In a parallel manipulator, each actuated joint is attached both to the ground and to the end effector. There are two common types of parallel manipulators. The first common type is called the Stuart or Goff platform. This type of manipulator is named after its inventors. Goff invented this type of manipulator in 1947. Later on, in 1965, Stewart suggested that this sort of manipulator would be a good type to use for flight simulators. Still today, the Stewart or Goff platform is the type of manipulator that is used for flight simulators as well as other kinds of simulators. Let's take a look now at what this platform looks like. This is a Stewart platform. It consists of a platform at the top. This is its end effector, and it consists of six linear prismatic actuators attached to the platform. This video is going to take you through showing you that the end effector, which in this case is the platform up at the top, we can control the X, Y, and Z position of the end effector and we can also control all three of the uh, angles of rotation or the orientation of the end effector. Here they're showing you moving it in the XY plane before they showed it moving in the Z axis. This is possible, of course, because we have six degrees of freedom in this robot. There are six prismatic joints that are, in this case, placed in parallel. We can tell that this is a parallel mechanism because each of the joints, each of these prismatic joints, is attached both to the ground and to the end effector. The Stewart or Goff platform is defined by having all of its joints, which are actuated, 
be prismatic joints. The second type of common parallel manipulator is called the delta robot. The delta robot, as you'll see when I show you a video in a moment, is characterized by having each of its actuated joints be revolute joints. Let's take a look at a delta robot. The delta robot shown here doing a fast pick and place operation, we can tell that it is also a parallel mechanism because each of its joints are also attached both to ground, which in this case is up here on the ceiling, and the end effector, which is down here at the bottom. But it's different than the Stewart or Goff platform because each of these joints is a revolute joint, not a prismatic joint. However, like the Stewart or Goff platform, the Delta robot is also able, capable of a range of motions that includes all three degrees of positioning and also all three degrees of orientation. In the next video, we're going to take a look at how the kinematics of parallel manipulators are different from that of serial manipulators.